what led, what lay the foundation for our discussion? What lay the foundation for this report? If you can give us a brief outline of the HPG report, why it was undertaken, and its major findings. Simon. Sure, Sam. Um, thanks very much for that introduction. It's, it's really great to be able to talk about the report uh, today on a panel that's also going to be providing analysis and data straight from the field, and which is made up by people who have such a wealth of experience in Gaza. Uh, this report is actually part of a series of reports, uh, which looked at seven urban areas, which all accommodate large numbers of displaced people. And the studies compared the challenges displaced urban residents faced with those faced by the host population in order to feed into ongoing debates in the humanitarian sector about what the urbanization of displacement uh, really means for how humanitarians operate. Um, and that's, that's kind of how Gaza was, situ was situated um, within the series. Uh, in terms of our aims for the study as, as a standalone work, um, wh while Gaza was is in, in many ways a unique setting, it was chosen because we thought that uh, through the long history of responding to urban displacement, it might yield insights uh, that more recent responses could not. Uh, we also wanted to move away from a tendency at that time to focus on cost, Operation Cost Lead as a major displacement event and to investigate whether there were displacement specific vulnerabilities that weren't being taken account of. It's worth mentioning, as, as Sam already has, that it's, it's very difficult to define or measure displacement in a place where uh, the population cannot actually flee to safe haven. Um, our, our definition uh, didn't incorporate all registered refugees, which are 1.1 million out of 1.6 uh, million people in Gaza. Rather, it was a, a conceptual uh, definition rather than a legal one. And we define displaced people as those who'd lost their homes, um, their habitual place of residence, within the period since 2001. And we, we chose the start of the Second Intifada until the present in order to capture a range of displacement events, uh, including multiple military operations, including the clearing of the land near Rafa, um, and the expansion of the so-called buffer zone. In total, over 300 people participated in focus groups in four different urban areas. Uh, we spoke to 62 additional key informants in local civic structures, in the state bureaucracy, uh, civil society, academia, international organizations. We asked people about access to services, access to justice, to their protection threats, land rights and access, and international assistance in order to try and get a really holistic picture of the challenges faced by people in displacement. Um, before I, I tell you more about the main findings, I, I thought it might be useful to provide a, a sketch of uh, what displacement in Gaza looks like. Um, as mentioned, it's, it's, it's densely populated. Uh, there are about 1.6 million people in 365 square kilometers, which works out to about uh, 4,353 people per kilometer. Um, to give you a comparison, uh, I, I tried to find a UK-centric one, but the best one I could find is that Gaza is slightly smaller than Washington, D.C., um, but Washington, D.C. only has a population of about 600,000. And the, the result is the majority of the, the territory is urban or peri-urban with some agricultural land. Much of the growth of fixed settlements has happened through the urbanization of, of refugee camps and through the expansion of refugee populations outside of camps. Uh, People who are, who are displaced that we looked at in the study had, had mostly lost their homes to airstrikes and through being bulldozed in areas close to the border or close to Israeli settlements in the pre-2005 period or for other reasons. Um, there, there are no tent camps in, in Gaza, which is what one might expect in, in other situations of internal displacement. Rather, displaced families um, and Palestinians tend to live in extended family structures stay in rental accommodation, or uh, they join, join other members of their family or neighbors. Uh, many are on waiting lists for housing to be built by the UN or by Hamas. Um, the UN has secured funding for much of this housing, but it is delayed by authorization and import restrictions um, due to the Israeli-Egyptian blockade. It's also worth mentioning that there's a severe housing backlog for the population at large, um, which is the result of family expansion and population growth, but 
the destruction of homes in, for example, Operation Cross, let alone, accounts for 9% of that uh, figure um, as of June last year. There were a number of, of findings from the report. I'm, I'm just going to highlight a few now. Um, we found that differences in vulnerabilities between people who were displaced and, and people who hadn't been in this period were not pronounced. And that then raises the question of why, if, if people have lost homes, have lost huge assets, have suffered trauma, why is there not a, a more marked difference between the challenges they face and those that others do? And answers to that question really relate to um, chronic and cumulative effects uh, of military operations, the blockade, and other policies, the effects that these have had on the population as a whole. Uh, people who haven't lost homes may have lost businesses, other assets may have taken in family members into their own homes. There is a, a constant level of threat, primarily from military operations, but also from internal conflict dynamics. Um, for most people in, uh, in Gaza, there's also been a marked and severe decline in income, employment and self-sufficiency. Uh, th the lack of really pronounced vulnerabilities it also relates to the fact that there, there are safety nets which have mitigated the effects of displacement to a degree. And those include formal assistance programs provided by UN agencies, international local grassroots NGOs. Uh, and these programs provide basic services, food assistance, income support, um, really a, a range of programs to needy households in the population at large and specifically for displaced populations, um, rental assistance. Crucially, too, in, in all the study areas we looked at, uh, the displaced receive support from the extended family. Um, there's a high level of hosting, um, and local organizations also remain important in as sources of assistance and moral support. And all of these family and community structures perform really crucial functions in, in buffering families from the worst effects of displacement. Um, and that's something that we really come back to in the conclusions of the report when we ask about the sustainability of safety nets in the context of growing needs and the likelihood of repeat events. Having highlighted that the differences were not so pronounced, it's, it's also necessary to explain that uh, there were, however, indications that displacement compounded some of the vulnerabilities that were widespread in society or heightened the risk of families facing certain challenges. Um, for instance, uh, displacement often forces families to live in out of overcrowded conditions. Um, overcrowding is by no means restricted to displaced families and their hosts, but it's nonetheless very prevalent in this group. And there were indications in our research that it contributed to poorer mental health, lower educational outcomes for children, and maybe linked to family violence. And this really needs more in investigation, is not really adequately understood. There was also marked financial strain in meeting rental payments, in rebuilding costs, which were leading some families into increased poverty or indebtedness. Um, respondents most frequently mentioned having to limit the education of their children or of themselves in order to cope with this. And if one understands the, the role that education plays in, in society in Gaza, it's, it's really a sign of distress. Um, we also found that the displaced may be in greater need of legal assistance um, as the lack of correct documentation to prove ownership um, of property and land is, is a widespread problem. And, and um, I was surprised to, to understand that it's, that's often unknown to people until they find out that they're actually ineligible for reconstruction assistance as a result. Um, to, to wrap up, we, we wrote in the, the conclusions of the report that many of these challenges were only expected to, to worsen, uh, that despite the fact that respondents expressed a strong desire for self-sufficiency, uh, the figures in the reports from the UN and other sources really were foretelling a different story, one in which living conditions would become increasingly desperate. What's more, in the meantime, we also made the point that getting assistance to displacement right, um, and also the broader international response, which really goes beyond aid, um, was crucial because there were ongoing smaller airstrikes resulting in home demolition, and also because another acute displacement event was likely. And ironically, just as the report was going to print, uh, Operation Pillar of Defense unfolded, which I think really underscores how crucial the issue is. Mm. Can I just ask you, you mentioned, Simone, that uh, the displacement 
has increased or the suffering from it has increased. Although in 2005, when the Israeli military disengagement took place, everybody expected that it will decrease. What happened there? Um, I don't think it's so much the case that uh, displacement per se has increased or, or uh, suffering related to s displacement specifically has, but living conditions in Gaza as a whole have deteriorated markedly since the blockade was put in place. Mm. And you mentioned, uh, I think that takes us, because uh, you mentioned the safety nets. And one of the safety nets is the United Nations uh, agencies. 